Today, we're talking about how transparency helps gig marketplaces. Our featured guest today is Chris Heffernan, who's the founder and CEO of Delivered, which is uh, a great marketplace with 65 markets you guys are in across the U.S. and Canada, which is awesome. It's an insane growth uh, that you've seen, and you've been in this space, the gig delivery space, since 2011, which I, I'm sure I'm not surprising you with that. I'm sure you know how long you've been in this space. But uh, but yeah, and, and uh, you are going to talk with us about uh, how we can – how transparency can help gig marketplaces, right? So we, we've talked in depth on Rock in Your Marketplace before uh, with marketplace leaders about the importance of having these worker-focused marketplaces. And one of the things that I've said a hundred times that we strongly believe is that marketplaces should be gig worker-focused. And uh, being transparent is something we've teased before. It's one aspect of what it means to be gig worker-focused as a marketplace. And so we're going to dive headfirst into exactly what that means and what that looks like for gig marketplace leaders and uh, and what you can do practically to build transparency into your two-sided marketplace, into your platform. So uh, the first question I have for you, Chris, is why are you passionate about uh, transparency? Why, why do you believe this is important? Uh, transparency is important because it's the crucial part of any business decision, right? So I look at it, we're treating these gig workers on the marketplaces as independent contractors, right? Which is in essence an independent business. We're asking them to make a business decision Absolutely. with limited information. So think, take a step back. Would that gig marketplace make a decision on a contract or on a, or any business decision really? if they weren't given full information, but yet they're requiring their many businesses, these independent contractors, to make these business decisions every day without giving them all the info right up front. So I think it's a huge piece because why would I expect someone to do something that I wouldn't do myself in the business world? Um, so that's that's why I think that transparency between a marketplace and those gig workers is so so important. Yeah, it's good to marketplace leaders. It's like put put yourself in the gig workers' shoes, right? You're you're leading your marketplace, and in the same way, they're they're leading their their small business, right? They're independent contractors, and uh, and so put yourself in their shoes and and try to think what would I want to know if I was if I was in their place if I'm leading my business, right? I I want to know everything. I know for me, like I don't I don't make purchases without uh, really researching things because I'm a complex buyer, right? And so. So that really hits home. So I, I think what what are some realizations that gig marketplace leaders need to make in order to see how important uh, transparency is? I mean, really all you have to do is take a quick Google uh, with a lot of in the delivery space in specific, what the lack of transparency has done and kind of that negative shift it puts into the workers because workers start questioning everything at that point. So if you're not transparent, it just leaves room for people to make assumptions, right? And then those assumptions become a landslide of, of negativity in that workforce uh, or even in like, you know, a PR front. So the biggest piece really uh, in that sense is just to really control the narrative, right? You don't have to worry about making sure that you know, the perception is X if you're telling it exactly how it is in the beginning. So if you're just upfront, like this is where you're going, this is what you're doing, this is how much money you're going to make. These are the realistic expectations of the job duties. Uh, you're going to just get better results downstream with it as opposed to caging up half that info because you're afraid that either people won't take it or they're going to share it with somebody or, you know, who knows, or they're going to decline that job or that particular gig where, you know, as opposed to dealing with the fallout from the lack of transparency, just deal with it up front, deal with the pushback up front of people maybe not wanting to do it. Because just like for us as a business or any business, not every client is the right client, not every customer is the right customer. And for these gig, these gig workers on the marketplaces, every opportunity or gig that they're offered might not be the right one for them. And that's the that's the bonus of being an IC is that ability to accept or decline or choose or not choose to do any of those opportunities that are presented to you. And by not being transparent in that opportunity, it's kind of like 
tricking that gig worker into taking it where if you just gave them all the information, maybe they won't, maybe some won't take it, but the ones that will knew what they were getting into. And, you know, you're going to have better success with that down the road. Yeah, I mean, in the end, like you're saying, it builds that long-term trust that can be broken when gig marketplaces aren't transparent, right? I think uh, you you might be um, quick to assume as a marketplace leader that workers don't realize when you're trying to not tell them something, right? And uh, and usually that, at least from, from my perspective, I think it a lot of times comes from fear, right? If I don't if I give them this information, right, like you said, they're not going to take this gig. They're not going to take this job. Um, and in that, in that way, I, I feel like you're prioritizing um, your, your demand side of your business over the supply side of, of, of your business. And, um, and, and why do that, right? Your, your biggest need and your, your biggest priority as a, as a marketplace should be on uh, your workers, right? So yeah, that, that's that's really good stuff. I I think um, you've mentioned uh, in the past we, we we had a conversation before this, and um, just like we talked about putting yourself in in the shoes of your gig workers, right? To, like you put put your uh, employees in the place of gig workers. Like what you wouldn't expect your employees um, to make decisions that uh, based on based on limited information, right? Um, so I think that's, I think that's really good. I don't know if, do you have any other thoughts that you would want to add there, um, before we kind of move on to just the, the practically, how do you do this? Yeah, no, I mean, it's, it's funny you bring up like the employee, you know, the employee part of it too. A lot of, a lot of companies and I mean, delivered included, we use, you know, independent contractors because it allows them that flexibility and it helps our business model. Mm -hmm. And a lot of these, you know, marketplaces and a lot of these businesses that utilize ICs, you know, they get those, the advantages, the tax, you know, the no employee benefits, uh, you know, all those, all those financial benefits that are there. But for so long, we've been like companies have been kind of, I don't want to say like taking advantage of, but like pushing the limits on things. And a big piece of that is transparency. Another piece is just, uh, you know, like the, the, what we expect these gig workers to do whereas like what you would expect an employee to do. So I don't know why we changed the mindset so much, like a worker is a worker and there's different conditions between an employee and, and a gig worker. But why did we think that we could change so much in the way we treat the gig workers versus the way we treat the employees? All these big marketplaces care about culture for their employees, but then care nothing about the gig worker experience. So I think, Something needs to change. I don't know that you can create a culture for gig workers because they're fragmented. But for us, like we basically just kind of tried to shift it a little bit to like us in the delivery business. The gig worker is that worker is a customer, right? We're trying to get them to buy deliveries from us. So everything we do is treating them as a customer to, hey, buy this delivery. Because at the end of the day, any platform or any marketplace for us a delivery marketplace is nothing without a delivery driver partner. If you look at, you know, a housing one where, you know, you need someone to be a host. If you have no hosts, you have no housing platform. So everybody's always so focused, like you said just a few ago, on that demand side, but not on the fulfillment side. And I think there needs to be just as much attention to the workers or those call them like internal customers as well as your external customers, your revenue generating customers. Because if you don't have a good harmony between the two, what's the point of having the demand if you don't have the supply and vice versa? Yeah, I, I love that. that. That is just fantastic insights into that. And um, I, I think that the gig marketplaces that are going to be the ones that win in an increasing, increasingly competitive uh, market, which is what what the gig economy is at the moment, are the ones who are creating the best culture for their gig workers, a culture of of trust, exactly like you're saying. And and yeah, it, 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 there's different ways of doing it. And I'm hoping to see um, as as this market continues to expand, more companies figure out ways to even better serve gig workers, to be even more transparent, um, right? Things like that. And so it's it's people who think like you who give me like such immense hope in uh, the future of the gig economy. I believe really strongly in the future of, 
of the gig marketplace, the two-sided marketplace model, because of, because I know that if we if we can build this transparency and a, a worker focused um, culture in whatever that means, right? That's, who knows what that's going to mean if it's community shaping or you know I, like I don't know, but I I know that the 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 market can survive and will absolutely thrive. And the, the customers who are, are going to, or the businesses who are going to win are going to be the ones who treat their gig workers um, as independent contractors, as, as you've said. So that's, that's great. Let's, let's um, move a little bit to the, the practical ways that gig marketplaces can be transparent with gig workers. What, what, what are your uh, thoughts initially there? What, what are some practical ways that they can be transparent? Yeah, I mean, the easiest way is just give give like give a full picture of what this gig either from the beginning if we want to go like back to the onboarding of this worker from the front, this is what you're going to do. This is how often you're going to do it and be realistic with your expectations. I mean, there's always like oh, guaranteed earnings of X are great, but it's, you know, earn up to $100 an hour, what, because somebody one time did this and made that, you know, 100 bucks an hour. So give realistic projected earnings. And if you're only getting that $100 per hour once per week, and that's what's realistic, just say that. Don't say earn this much money every day, every week, uh, you know, or multiple days in the week. Be upfront with those things. And then as you're offering those opportunities out, like we said before, like, Give the give the upfront. I think a lot of people in the marketplace are just afraid of no, right? Like they're not going to take it if they don't. If they if we give them the full picture, let them say no. That's why we use the independent contractors. So, I mean, I look in the delivery space in specific, in specific. A lot of times they'll show you where you're picking up from, but not where you're delivering to. You'll earn between this window or projected earnings are X, like. And, but you don't know where the destination is. Just give that up front or, you know, in some of the ride share apps, like it'll just tell you like this drives going kind of far. Do you still want to accept? And as you know, as we see those kinds of things, it's all kind of like a mind trick game, a way to trick gig workers into taking these these jobs. So I think the easiest way to really be practically transparent is take that one step back and be like, would I say yes to this with this limited knowledge? If I was a business, would I do that? And if you can't confidently say yes, or you're doing this because you're afraid of the no, then something needs to change in your marketplace. Yeah, that is, that's really good stuff. And uh, yeah, I mean, it really came, comes down to exactly what you said. Like, don't, don't hide anything. Be as detailed as you, as you can. Um, right. And, and I think that, uh, you started to hit on something there that I think is a, a big one for a lot of marketplaces. And it's not just transparency right in the moment as a gig workers on your app. It's also transparency when they're signing up, like, what are you promising them? Right. Um, because the, the name of this game is trust, right? And so uh, trust can be easily broken when you make false promises from the get go. Like you, like you said, the, the, you can make a hundred dollars an hour here, but oh, but it only happens once a week, right? Um, so, yeah. Uh, do, do you have do you have any thoughts on on that at all? Yeah, no, and it it stinks because I think there's a lot of gig workers out there that are are great, and they really found a way to master this. They don't want to be stuck at a desk or working in a restaurant for eight hours, 10 hours a day, and they're piecing together all these different gig opportunities. And I think that's going to be crucial to that success you mentioned. And gig working isn't going anywhere. Uh, we have lots of drivers on our platform in specific that do a variety of different gig opportunities and they make they make a decent living and they really love it because it gives them the freedom. We have a lot of them that will be like, hey, I'm in Tucson, Arizona this week. And then next month, I'm going to be in Denver, Colorado. Can I take orders there? And they just kind of bebop around. It's almost like a digital nomad, but like a gig nomad. Like, why not go check out a new city, turn on the six gig app marketplaces that you work on, and like hang out in that new city and check it out. So I think, you know, we'll see a lot more of that. But uh, circling back, I think, you know, um, you're right. Trust is super important in a lot of gig workers have kind of been like tarnished with it, right? Like we get a lot of distrust and there's a lot of like negative the second it's like something's granularly different. Well, you said this or you did that or, you know, and then out comes kind of like the negative and the accusations. 
And I don't take it personally, and I tell the team not to take it personally. It's just these dri- these drivers or these gig workers have been kind of burned in the past with people over-promising or not paying what they said they would. A lot of people really try and just like cut corners on that on that gig marketplace. So starting with that foundation of trust and keeping it, I'm not saying you need to open up like, you know, your financials and show it to every gig worker, but like, what's the point of being over transparent? Like I'm over transparent to a fault because I don't, I don't see what hiding information from anybody really, really benefits anybody at all. So, and most of these gig marketplaces, there's nothing special that any one particular person is doing that somebody else isn't. Even for us, like we just happen to build like an API that integrates with things and, connected drivers with demands. Like there's nothing special that we did. There's no special sauce there. The difference is just kind of how we treat those gig workers and how we work with our clients that are, you know, a little bit different, but it all started on the foundation of transparency and trust. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, that's great. I, I, you know, I was just thinking like practically for gig marketplaces, one of the biggest complaints I hear is, uh, I've, I've got a lot of people who are getting on my app and no one's taking, no one's actually getting on and, and working. Like they're going through the whole startup process and they're doing their background check and they, uh, then they don't ever work. Right. And I think like, I mean, part of the solution to that problem is like, are you giving them accurate information up front about what it's going to be like on your app? Is that why they're not coming? You know? That, yeah, that's that's great, and, and really, that's exactly what, what your story is with delivered is exactly what I'm what I'm, I believe strongly, and it's it's that the company who who treats gig workers best is the one that's going to win. So um so so this this is my my next question. I know it gets hard for gig marketplaces um, to keep the precise balance between supply and demand, and um, sometimes when demand starts pulling ahead, that that's the that's the time when marketplaces get really tempted to start hiding things from workers um, so that they have enough supply to meet that demand. Um, And so some marketplaces that are very committed to transparency um, can be tempted to, uh, to not be transparent at times for business reasons or, you know, you you name why. Uh, And, and I think it's important. And I think um, that as we've talked about, it's important to build a lasting dedication to transparency that, that doesn't waver in those difficult times. So do, do you have any just um, maybe operational inf- uh, information or ideological information? How, how would you, uh, how do you think companies could build that lasting dedication to transparency? Yeah. I mean, the one piece, uh, one thing that we really focus on is we, uh, as, as an organization, we humanize what's important and automate the rest, Right. And a lot of the stuff that's automated is kind of cued into the basics of our business model. So if we want it to change the way that we communicate information to the workers, we would have to make a huge change to that automation. So the first step is kind of like if your core foundation is transparency and your your tech is kind of wired into it, for us, we would have to go back and make a massive amount of a massive amount of modifications so that we wouldn't, in essence, be transparent, which kind of kills the you know kills the whole point of it because by the time we made those changes, we would be through that through that rough time. And then I think there too, the answer to that issue is also just kind of transparency. Like if we're in a market and we notice we need more, you know, we get a new client, we need more drivers or demand is just upticked, like going into the last quarter of the year is huge for uh, pre-scheduled catering deliveries, which is, you know, a majority of our revenue. So we're going into it and we're just, we're straight up with the drivers about that. We're sending out email blasts, asking for referrals, stepping up our referral incentives, stepping up our recruiting and just being very, very transparent, like it's going to be busy. We need more drivers. Like, how can you help? Like, how can you help with that? And here's how you can make some money. So, you know, I think in that sense, it's almost just doubling down as opposed to like pulling back on on transparency. So, yeah, the, uh, doubling down on transparency. I love I love the idea that you have just like what don't build don't build a fail safe. Right. Like, don't make it so easy for you to take it away. <laughs> Just, just be all in in your in your development on your engineering side on your product development side, like 
be all in to transparency and, and don't build a fail safe that you can get out. And, uh, and the solution to the problem that you're facing is not less transparency. It's more, it's the, the solution to, um, I have a crisis and I need more gig workers is you want to build that trust and keep your gig workers and be transparent with them and get them on the platform. So I think that is, I think that's all super, super good. Uh, thinking about all of this, Chris, what, what would you say is the biggest takeaway that you want gig marketplace leaders to have? What's the biggest thing they can walk away from this with? Uh, yeah, I mean, the biggest thing to walk away would just be, be, you know, just the important, the importance of the, tra- the importance of transparency. I mean, it's kind of what we kicked it off with is probably like the opening, opening line for this podcast. I, I think doing like the walk a mile in their shoes. Would you, would you do this? Um, and if the answer is no, or I, you know, I need more info before I would say yes, or before I would click accept, then you might have to, you might have to make some changes. Uh, one thing, you know, we have every, uh, every person in like the office from engineering to customer service to marketing, uh, for us, we have to go out and even me, like we have to go out and do one delivery every 90 days. So we get the same text message. We get the same app notifications when we do that. And if you, if we got that and I was sitting there struggling, like, I don't know where this order is going. I don't know if this is worth it. Like, is there a toll? Do I have, like, I want to look at the route, how much food is on this order. And these are all things that we provide. But if I found myself asking any questions, like what don't I know about this order, then yeah, then the transparency needs to be, to be changed. So I would say step one or you know, main takeaway one from that for me is that it is important and they should treat it as important. And then step two, like think about what are you doing for your gig workers or the, you know, the gig participants on your marketplace to treat them more like customers or to treat them more like workers as opposed to, you know, contractor number 72A6314, you know, uh, because without yeah. without gig workers on your gig marketplace, you don't have a marketplace. Just like without regular customers, you don't have a marketplace. That's awesome. Yeah, treat your treat your gig workers like your customers because they are. That's awesome. So we're going to throw a link in the podcast notes here to Delivered. Definitely recommend checking out the website. Uh, and we're going to throw a link as well to, uh, to follow you on LinkedIn, Chris. So uh, if you're listening to this, go check those two things out. But is there anything else we could uh, push people to? Anything else you want uh, us to put in the show notes, um, Chris? No, nothing uh... – Nothing extra that I can think of. I mean, I don't, I'm, I don't, I'm not super active on LinkedIn. It's on my to-do list. But, uh, you know, I do have some good posts coming up, like after our conversation uh, and then this podcast. I think, you know, we have a lot of – there's a lot of chatter all kinds of different places in the gig world. But you don't really see a lot of people kind of standing up for, you know, gig worker transparency and kind of gig worker treatment, so to speak. So, you know, we have some good good stats coming on the delivered LinkedIn as well as mine. So try and shed some light on this uh, just because they're crucial to crucial to the delivered platform. So I know they're crucial to all the other marketplace platforms. So maybe, you know, we can all kind of band together and save the gig economy. I don't know. You know, insert Braveheart speech here. Exactly. Well, no, I'm like genuinely. Yeah. Yeah. I, I like um, we're going to throw links to both of uh, you and Delivered's LinkedIn in the comments. And, and here's the thing, P- the reason why we're doing that and, and why I think we all really need to go and, and follow you and um, engage with one another is because I, I want this strong community uh, to, to, to be happening in among gig marketplace leaders. I think there's a lot of value in that. And that's part of what we're trying to build here by, by podcasting on YouTube, on LinkedIn and all those places is, we want to see a community of people who are helping one another out. And honestly, there's no, at least from, in my opinion, I don't think there's a better expertise um, than you can get from gig marketplace leaders. So yeah, so go, go follow, go follow Chris and check that out. Guys, we're, we're posting here uh, every week. We're on YouTube and all of your favorite podcast apps. So if you would, if you're listening to this on audio and you want to watch it on video, check it out on YouTube and, uh, and engage with the community. We'd love to see you guys back. We'd love to hear your thoughts and we will catch you in the next episode.